Well, I mean, here we are testifying before a Senate committee, and well, why don't you tell us why you're not doing that? Well, uh, it seems know. like to me that you have the tools uh, at your disposal at the FCC, truly, on these spectrum auctions well, to well, solve this problem. I think we do. Uh, number one, I just observed that we're two out of five people, so we don't necessarily command a majority for everything that we want to do. We don't have the votes. The commission is appointed. And I, I understand there's five, uh, but I, I can't imagine. I, well, I'd, I'd, I'd love to get some of the other commissioners up here then, Mr. Chairman, and talk about it, but I, I sh I'd sure love for you, since you seem a little perturbed about it, for you to air why that is not occurring. It's not occurring because we don't, for all of the reasons that I've, I've tried to explain this morning, we don't have a national strategy. We don't have that charge from uh, on high to get this job done. We don't have the, the charge saying, this is the most important infrastructure problem our country faces. Go and use the authority you have and get it done. If you don't have the authority, come back here and get some more. It's either going to be a priority or it's not going to be a priority, and we're not treating it as a priority. And to me, it's the central infrastructure challenge that we face right now. If we don't do this, small business is going to suffer, minorities are going to suffer, rural America is going to suffer, and the country as a whole is going to suffer. It's a job that's not getting done. And it's well, you're one of, I, again, I don't want to create uh, acrimony here, but I, I just, I, just uh, I have people come in our office representing com companies from around the country that feel like they could solve this problem. Uh, Y'all are two of five commissioners, apparently, that could affect that, and, and I, I think that's an area for us well, to begin. I, I think that's true, but in the, in the deregulated environment in which we live, and uh, which is the environment that a lot of these companies push for, we were told that if we would deregulate, the job would get done. We deregulated. The job didn't get done. I think I know one of the companies you're referring to. You're talking about getting wireless spectrum into use, and that's something that I talked about. I think you're exactly right on. There are opportunities out there to do it. Now, why didn't that happen? Why, it's a very good question. A company perhaps is M2Z that you're talking about. This is a company that had a proposal for a nationwide uh, use of, of a certain area of spectrum that's now underutilized. They uh, argued under Section 7 of the Act that says we're supposed to get new services and new technologies uh, approved or decided up or down within a year. Now, they put a proposal in, and it was a year before we even acted on it. Now, we didn't even have the opportunity to vote on anything because nothing came before us for a whole year. Finally, we just put an NPRM like the day <laughs> before the year expired so we wouldn't be exposed in court. But why didn't we do it quicker? What, what are we waiting for before we even put out a notice asking what we should do about something? Here, this private company did identify, I think helpfully, that there was some underutilized spectrum. And they wanted to do something with it. Well, whether you like what they want to do or not, why don't we find a way to get that spectrum to use, get them or somebody else using it, auction it off, get it moving, get that out for notice, and get the auction up and running. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, we need to be doing that. We need to look at every inch of spectrum we have and try to pack more data on it. Here's an example of where we didn't do our job. We didn't really comply with the spirit of trying to get things done in a year, and, and it is frustrating a little bit. It's making me age uh, prematurely. I appreciate the time. And, Mr. Chairman, I would just... No, that's a, a very legitimate and very important series questions. I think it, it does, you know, clearly it begs the question is on the table. Well, and, and I think that you before know? we uh, get involved in, a, you know, mapping and the federal initiative and all that, I think there's an entity here that with some degree of innovation within its own ranks uh, could go a long way towards solving this problem without, uh, in a way that candidly is not something that would use a lot of federal resources. I mean, you've got spectrum, uh, we've got a need, uh, y'all got the ability to auction that spectrum in a way that uh, creates uh, universal access if you so decide, and I would just uh, urge the commissioners uh, to maybe come back and talk with us about uh, ways of making that happen. But again, thank you for this, and I, I had no idea I was going to ask even these types of questions. It really came for uh, because Mr. Meffords is wearing our state, and I wanted to pay tribute to him, but uh, thank you for this testimony. Well, no, we appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it's good to get everybody's crackiness out on the table. You know? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate it. We're going to go right to the second panel. We're under a little bit of time pressure here, so if we could just have a seamless transition, that'd be terrific. Um, and I think, uh, Senator Corker, that we... I think it'd be really worthwhile to get the other commissioners in and have this conversation, and I'll do that. We'll do that. Um, thank you very much.